Okay, uh, good day, ladies and gentlemen. So today we're going to look at adding two different things. Um, the first thing we're going to look at t doing is adding some traps that actually move around their platform. Uh, and then the next thing we're going to do is look at how could we go about adding coins and getting some kind of scoring system going. Okay, so the first thing uh, we're going to do is to just add our moving traps. So I've got a object called spikes, um, which I've seen you all created as well. What I'm going to do is just right click and clone the object there. Okay. So what this does is it makes an exact copy of the spikes object in terms of the images and everything, but we can now add behaviors to the second spikes object without it affecting our first one. So I'm just going to rename this spikes object to be moving spikes. Okay, and I'm going to drag an instance of the moving spikes onto the screen. And because they're going to be moving, I'm going to make them a little bit smaller just to give me a fighting chance of how to get past this obstacle. Okay, so I've got spikes, which are just normal spikes, and I've got movement spikes, which are going to be moving. The first thing we need to do is uh, we need to hook up the events. So when I look at my events sheet, if my player collides with spikes, it's going to restart, but we haven't said anything what to do with the moving spike. Okay, so I just need to add an event for player. Uh, when player collides with another object, when it collides with the moving spikes object, then I want to do a system and scroll down to do uh, restart layout. Okay, so exactly the same as the other spikes event, just uh, with the moving spikes. And if I press play now, there's my first set of spikes, but we can see that they're not moving at all. Okay, at the moment, but if I do hit them, it'll restart. So that event system is working nicely. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to make them move. And what we're gonna do is add a behavior to them called uh, the sign behavior. So I've got the moving spikes connected. I'm going to add a behavior and I'm going to find some, the sign behavior and add that. So what the sign behavior does is it basically has this kind of looped um, movement. But we can either loop it horizontally or vertically, or we can do some other things with it as well. So for instance, I'm going to just press play now. So now you can see that my platform is moving back and forth. It's moving horizontally left and right. Okay because that's what the sign behavior makes it do. Now, if I go back to my game and I change the movement from horizontal maybe to vertical and press play again, so now that I, my spikes are going up and down, okay? And there's a whole bunch of other things that we can make them do. So for instance, in the behaviors for the movement, instead of being move, maybe I'll go for size. And now when I press play, you can see that they're getting larger and smaller. So have a play with the properties uh, f that you can play with on this behavior. I'm gonna have horizontal movement and I'm just going to have my spikes going backwards and forwards. Just so that they go left and right over here now. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to look at how we add some coin collection. Um, you can see that I've already got the diamond object, uh, which I've just inserted into a sprite as normal. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to drag another diamond out right in front of us just so that I can test the system here.
just like that, just so that we don't have to go too far in order to test our system. Okay. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, we're going to need a variable to remember our score. So you'll remember from programming that variables are used to remember things. And what we want to do is we want to remember our score. So the plan will be we're going to add a variable and then we need some way to display the variable. So we're going to add the variable and then we're going to need some way to display the variable. And then when we add the diamond, uh, we are going to uh, add a score to the variable. Okay, so here's how this is going to work. Um, first thing I'm going to do is go to my event sheet and right click scroll down till I've got a global variable so I'm going to add that global variable and I'm going to call it score and it starts off with zero because that's what the score should be okay so now I've got a variable called score and there it is at the top zero then on my layout I'm going to add a new and I'm going to call it display text and then insert and that's going to go there text that's better I'm going to set its text to be zero because our score when it starts will be zero and I'm going to increase the font size so that we can see it quite nicely there okay now if I press play now And as I scroll off, you'll see that my scroll, my text actually disappears. It stays still, and that's not what we need at all. So what we can do is we can add a behavior to the text box, which is right click, add behavior, and we're gonna anchor it. And what that does is that when we play the game now, even though the camera's moving, the score is going to stay still. Okay, so that doesn't move. Okay, so we're going to use that text box then to display our variable. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is say whenever our player interacts with a diamond, let's go to a, our event sheet. When our player has a collision to a diamond, then I want to go to my variables. What we're going to do then is to add 10 points to the score variable. Then I'm going to set display text, I'm going to find this action that says set the text, there it is in yellow, and we're going to set that equal to score. And then finally, we are going to get rid of the diamond, destroy the diamond. So whenever the player collides with a diamond, add 10 to score, set the display text equal to score and then destroy the diamond okay and then when we press play now if i collide to this first diamond there's my first score and then there's my second score okay so there's two more bits of logic that we can add so we can add moving traps by using the sign behavior and then we can add a variable and score points as we're moving along Okay, so incorporate this into your game and I look forward to seeing what you produce. Take care now.